I just read in the news that physicist Stephen Hawking claims to know what happened before the Big Bang. And no, I'm not talking about the TV show with Sheldon Cooper, but a great cosmological event in which our entire universe would have expanded out from. And some will tell you that it perhaps came from a black hole. Others will say maybe it was a collapsing 4D star. According to Dr. Michio Kaku, there are different places we can look for these theories. And if you haven't picked up this book already, I strongly urge you to go grab a copy today. This is The Future of Humanity, Dr. Michio Kaku's brand new book. And it's filled with all sorts of exciting new ideas about terraforming other planets, exploring space, new models of physics. But most importantly, he explores some concepts to do with how we can discover the origins of the universe. He says, really, up until this point in physics, we've had two real models to look at. One of them comes from Albert Einstein, of course, with the general theory of relativity. And Einstein's theories answer all the questions to the big things out there. We start to see the fundamental basics of space-time geometry and the calculations for things like black holes. But when we want to look over at the infinitesimally small stuff, we have to go look over into the quantum. Hence what we find with quantum mechanics in the work of Niels Bohr and Erwin Schrodinger. And many scientists have tried to bring these two theories together into something called the unified field theory. Einstein spent the last 30 years of his life trying to do this. And the only thing that comes close to this would be Planck energy. Hence what we find with Planck time or the work of Max Planck. And there are all sorts of mathematical theories, even when we consider Maxwell's equations with light, but then we get infinite possibilities. So again, Planck energy is about the closest thing that we can uh, do to bring these things together. We then also have to consider string theory. And string theory has a lot of criticisms out there, but what you have to do to understand string theory is we almost have to go back into the laws of harmonics, which actually originate from the Pythagoreans, that the entire universe is operating with a, a sort of music, hence M theory or music theory, that everything is emanating from the mind of God, and that we look at everything around us operating like music chords on the chromatic scale. And so when we take atom smashers or particle accelerators and we break down an atom, we get down into these things called subatomic particles, which have all sorts of funny sounding little names like quarks, neutrinos, hadrons, leptons, W bosons. And these are what we call strings when we examine them. And mathematically, we can see from that that a universe operates up to the 10th dimension. Now, with these realizations, we can also use certain mathematical calculations to predict that not only does our universe operate with certain laws and dimensions, but we can also look at the idea of other universes and see that there are most certainly the calculations there to show that they exist. But there have been other discoveries, which Dr. Michio Kaku has pointed out in his other books before, where he has said in his other works, such as we find with hyperspace and physics of the impossible, that he's looked at the Wilkinson's microwave anisotropy probe, or the WMAP scan. And what that allowed to, us to do is to look at the radioactive background scan of our universe and to see that not only did we discover that our universe is in the shape of a dodecahedron, which Plato revealed a very long time ago in his Tiamius, and you might ask yourself, how did he know that? But in the background radioactive scan of our universe, we also find that there are these circuitous patterns or multiple, multiple patterns, like a carbon copy that our universe has had multiple, multiple big bangs, thus showing us that there is a multiverse, that the universe is infinite, because in these equations that we find that there are infinite, infinite universes that can be created from these particular models. So it's very hard to find the origins of the universe. There are all sorts of theoretical possibilities, and we currently don't have the technology to create a baby universe to simulate this from scratch. Anyhow, where this also gets exciting when we start to look at the convergence between science and religion and spirituality is in some of these NDE accounts that we've heard from people, 
they have told us that when you cross over to the spirit side, your soul is a vehicle, just like this physical body is a vehicle. And the soul is a sum total of all your embodiments. And it's an electromagnetic field, so to speak, but it allows you to operate in our universe, which has got its principles that have been laid out like a cookie cutter with all its dimensions and densities and laws. But if you wanted to move to another universe or a parallel universe, it would operate with its own laws, thus requiring you to have a new uh, a soul vehicle, which I find very fascinating. Anyhow, when we look at what Stephen Hawking is saying, he's saying that we must go to the events that took place before the Big Bang, where he believes that time, being the fourth dimension, would have been in a stasis or a suspended mode, and that its function would have expanded or grown with the universe. He also goes on to say that he doesn't think there was a singularity, because if there was a singularity, the entire universe would be at the same temperature, and when you looked up at the sky at night, everything would be as about as bright as the surface of the sun but we know there's dark matter and there's other stages of growth and it's not all at the same stage so there are entirely different functions to the universe and how it operates and this makes us consider other possibilities such as what we learn from the kaibalion which is the all is mine and the universe is mental and that our universe is acting like this great cosmic mind everything is emanating from the mind of God. Therefore, it also makes me return to the ideas that I believe that we're all a part of the source and that the universe is a great intelligent field of information that we're all connected to. I do believe in a supreme being. And it doesn't matter to me whether you call that supreme being God or Allah or Brahma or the Great Spirit. I think we're all a part of it. Because we do see an intelligent blueprint in our universe. We do find that there are universal laws and natural laws. At one point, Einstein was asked if he believed in God. And he said, well, I don't believe in a God that's going to smite the Philistines for thee. But I believe in a God of law and order. I also think that once we start to contemplate these great realizations, we have to ask ourselves that age-old question that I always asked myself growing up and still to this day it's very hard for me to conceptualize that what came before the Big Bang in other words who made God and you know is there a beginning to the beginning what came before that and if you try to conceptualize that with your human mind it's almost impossible and there's only two ways that I really come to an understanding with that and I'll tell you how I We'll look at that and how it makes sense to me. And that is that this supreme being exists outside of linear space-time. And it's very hard for us to conceptualize that with the human mind right now in our current state. Because, I, I again, I think that the fourth dimension, which is time, exists in our universe as a mechanism for us to allow the measurement of our life experiences and to be able to bring into that equation somewhat of a, a tool to process everything that's happening to us and our experiences for greater growth and involvement as a whole to the collective consciousness. And the only way you're going to experience that is outside of these physical limitations because consciousness is a non-local awareness. There's a non-locality factor to us with this awareness that we have. And outside of this awareness right now, when you've expanded and grown beyond that, I believe there is a greater capacity to understand the infinite and all that is there. Uh, when you have the limitations of this physical existence, it is very hard to conceptualize that. But the other way that I've looked at this idea that everything was created from a nothingness is that in physics, we also learn that nothing is unstable. There's a fragility to it. And many of you will hear me say at the end of my videos, I'll meet you all at that place behind closed eyelids. And you probably wondered what I mean by that. Well, I believe there is this great example by that that we're all connected we all are a part of the cosmic mind and every night when i go to bed and i'll close my eyes 
and it will be dark behind my eyelids at first. I will get these hypnagogic images dancing after a short while that are there, which are really just neurological discharges. And as I start to see them out of the nothingness, I realize that there is always creative principles. There's always intelligence. It's always present. We're always exploring. We're always seeking. We're always part of that great cosmic mind. And I think this is a great and vast realization and a wonderful cosmic reality to contemplate. And it's great to have intellectual and spiritual curiosity about these things because it helps us grow. Uh, in fact, I've written a chapter about it in my book that I've been working on called You Plus Me Equals God Squared. So I think we're all a part of this great realization. But I want to know what you think. Do you believe in a supreme being? What do you think happened before the Big Bang? Was it all just a great big accident? Maybe you've thought about this before. Drop a comment below and tell us all about it. And remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And I'll talk to you all soon.